メロコーヘビーヘイレポートフォーデューティーレポートフォーデューティー I like that. That could be the new catchphrase. Yeah. Report for duty. What's up, everybody? With、uh, actually a lot of stuff to talk about today. Hey, I don't know if you guys heard the mailbag return this weekend to rave reviews. I had several DMs from people just saying something that they heard on the mailbag. So the mailbag is back. Go to iTunes. One of the things somebody sent me from the mailbag was John talking about his smooth cheeks.、Uh, but you go to iTunes, you leave us a review. <laughs> Manscaped, not on the pod this week. Uh, you leave us a review, five stars, leave us a question, tell us your favorite bar. And、uh, that's how you get in the Haberman and m i d d l e k o f f mail bag. Yep. Subscribe to the YouTube page. If you're watching on YouTube, hi. If you're not, go subscribe to the page.、Uh, share the podcast. Share the podcast with your people. We love a good grassroots movement. It's really what we've been doing for years,、uh, just digging ditches here in the podcast world. So、uh, help us out. Tell your friends. And、uh, yeah, good to, be, good to be heard here in 2022. Good to be back for this season. of... We've never done seasons. This is still season one of the podcast. I don't know if everyone's aware of that, but season one started back in October of 2016, and we're still in season one. It does feel like we had a, we started it because we were in a partnership with someone else and we started ourselves a couple years later. That's true. Me,、yeah. me and you. So maybe we, this is like the second iteration of just purely me and you kind of, you know, running this ship. What, what was it? Was that summer of 18 that we. <clears throat> That's a took, good, you know, took ownership of our content? I could tell by,、uh, yeah, it was eight, because I have the Excel spreadsheet documentary of we started making money on our own August 27th, 2018. That That's really first, the that date. Was a we week. Should, we、that、should a do、week. a celebration every August 27th. Yeah, it was the first time we ever,、uh, ever made any money. And just,、yeah. you know, a little inside, you know, business is booming since, but we made $2,600 our first week in business by ourselves. Yeah. Not bad.、Uh, Our rates were a little cheaper, you know, way cheaper. I couldn't even imagine fucking selling it, but, you know, <laughs> you got to do what you got to do. No, it's,、uh, it's been a steady, a steady build. My dad always told me、uh, because I just wanted money from my parents, you know, it's like very, very hard to make a dollar. You know, you start doing this, you, you know, when you really go into business for yourself, it's one thing when you work for people that pay you 50 grand, 80 grand, 100 grand, 150, whatever. It's hard to truly, especially what we did. You know, I worked in football, you worked in radio, then I worked in radio with you. It's not like you're a sales guy where you're actually the dollars and cents. It's just really just paid to scout players or talk or do a show. It's very separate from the money, I felt. You know? Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's, there's a huge gap. And, and there would be still if someone was selling it for us here, but we're in the trenches and you get a better feel for you know, the dollar. Well, there's something to be said for actually having a dollar or $20 in your hand.、Uh, m i d d l e k o f f ordered some pants like、uh, a month or two ago that didn't fit them, and he gave them to me. And I went and got them, kind of took them to my tailor. And she, she deals in cash, John. So I handed her three $20 bills. Here's $60. And handing over $60 in cash is very different than like a credit card. It was like, just up. And you don't even, you never touch it, you never see it. It's just. What do they say? Like zeros and ones on a digital readout? Like it's cash. When you hand somebody cash, you're like, I just gave somebody $60 and they gave me $4 back. But you know, you don't do that anymore. So you don't really think about、well, like、Elva, think about Elva who, clean, who cleans my place.、Uh, I actually, she didn't even ask. I pay her $100, her and her, her helpers. I, I just upped it. I started giving them $120. She came over this morning. So I just I leave it actually. I, I don't know if she doesn't want her,、uh, her workers to see because I put it in my computer <laughs> you know, between the two and you, I close it. Oh, you hide <laughs> it. I see. Yeah, for, she knows where it is. You know, it's, it's a weird transaction. For her people, I mean, from between me and her, it's very normal. But,、uh, <laughs> she, she doesn't want it like, on the main counter when,、so、yeah. everyone can see it when they walk she in. She should say, put $40 on the main counter and then put the other like, <laughs> $80、behind、somewhere else. Maybe. But yeah. Anyway, I don't know how we got off on that, but、uh, luckily we don't do deals only in cash. This show is brought to you in part by mybookie.ag, promo code HAMMON, the number one, mybookie.ag, promo code HAMMON, the number one, where it is about to get、uh, into high activity season. And mybookie.ag, promo code HAMMON, the number one, they will match that first deposit dollar for dollar up to a thousand bucks. If you accept the bonus, remember if you accept the bonus, you have to bet the full amount before you can withdraw funds, or you can decline the bonus. Either way, HAM won. 
let them know we sent you. Um, a lot coming up, NCAA tournament coming up, golf this week, UFC, big event coming up on Saturday, which you can bet on at mybookie.ag, promo code HAM and the number one. Can you imagine if you would have had like the five-team underdog parlay on Saturday for college basketball? Six what team. They, six. That would have paid? Six. Six team? <laughs> the top six seeds in college basketball all lost on Saturday. It's the first time that's ever happened in college basketball history. Would have been – and now someone that watched a little college basketball for the first time of the year all Saturday – you know, watching Baylor, Kansas is Baylor. They're at home. I mean, they're the same team. You know, I mean, they were the defending totally. national champions. And, and nobody really, nobody like fell out of the top 10 after last week. Gonzaga, I, Arizona both lost. They're one and two. Neither one of them moved. Didn't Colorado. Colorado also beat them at home, right? Colorado was at home. Yep. Correct. In front of a sellout. That's correct. I, I'd call St. Mary's a legitimate upset. I would imagine that was a 10 point line if I had just had to guess. Yeah. That was a pretty hey, big hey, Colorado's, upset. that's a legitimate upset too. I mean, Arizona losing. St. Mary's was at home. The guy that won the golf tournament was one forty to one. Sepp Straka, one forty to one. I, someone DM me like I put twenty dollars on it, made twenty eight hundred dollars. I was like, fuck, that's a good hit. Sepp Straka <laughs> had some. I had some good DraftKings runs with Sepp Straka. Good for him. Yeah. So Sepp Straka, game. sneaky American, Ukrainian actually, or not? No, no, not, not Ukrainian. Uh, Austrian. Uh, Austrian, yeah. But you know, he, he they moved. I, I saw some stuff on him. His brother and him both played at the University of Georgia. I mean, they've been here since, like, they were 12. I mean, they okay. were big-time golf prospects. Uh, the Arnold Palmer Invitational this week, John. John Rahm is your favorite. Uh, MyBookie.ag promo code him, that number one. Remember, la last year was the moment when Bryson hit it over the water and pointed. It was pretty cool. And Bryson's not going to be there this week, man. That's sad. I'm uh, actually – I miss Bryson in golf. I do. So do they. So do they. Uh, Rory – Rory took a big line last year too, didn't he? Didn't Rory hit one? Somebody else who was there was a day somebody was playing. I thought with Bryson, or maybe they weren't playing with Bryson. I just remember they had the they had the ball tracker, obviously, like they always do on that hole, whatever hole that is. There, the there was a random guy last year that did the, the the. I think that's a par five, and it was like Bryson ended up always getting a birdie with the guy he was playing with, who would lay up. It was like, <laughs> what the hell is the difference? You know? I thought somebody out drove Bryson once. On, there I there, was, there was a guy, I, I don't know if it was like a Cam Young or a Sam Burke. There was another name. It. I don't think it was like DJ or Rory, but it was a guy hitting it mm. close to as far. I think he out drove him the first time. That's why the hype on that second time was so big. And Bryson did it the farthest, that whatever his last time when he pointed. Yeah. But he still ended up getting a birdie and a Lee Westwood birdie too. And everyone was like, well, what the fuck? It's not like you're <laughs> double eagling the hole. When he did it the second, the crowd, the anticipation. I just sweet. remember it was it like was when sweet. Barry Bonds would come to the play and they'd break in on, you'd be watching Sports Center and they'd be like, we're not going to show you a Barry Bonds AB live. I think it was the moment that changed his career. Like it, 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 to me, that is when he went viral and it put him up a level, I thought. Don't yeah. you? Yeah. Just that moment and the anticipation, and there wasn't that much going on and it, over this enormous body of water. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's part of it. If it was just grass, I don't think it, it doesn't look as cool when you hit it straight down the fairway, right? No. When you're hitting over grass at a line, you got to fly it 350. There's just a ri there's this, risk that comes with water. Yeah. I'm not on steroids. <laughs> it was, so, I mean, I just, God, that was great. The both arms in the air thing, the crowd thing, the whole thing. Anyway, mybookie.ag, promo code HAM, and the number one, John. It's all there. The tournaments are getting ready to start, and so there's going to be great March promotions. We'll tell you about later uh, in the week at mybookie.ag, promo code HAM, and the number one. All right, so let's, uh, let's just check in on uh, the current state of things in the NFL. Sean McVay, still the coach of the Rams. Uh, John Lynch, still the GM of the 49ers. Uh, Troy Aikman, still not at ESPN yet. Herbie, apparently leveraging Amazon. And uh, Andrew Marchand said Amazon Prime video was prepared to offer McVay maybe $100 million for Thursday Night Football. But then McVay said no and is staying with the Rams. And so then the story was that maybe John Lynch would be up next, especially if Aikman were to leave Fox for Monday Night Football for $90 million, which is allegedly the deal that is out there, <clears throat> you know, waiting for him. Well, I've been told that John Lynch 
and he he had leverage coming in, right? He wasn't your typical first time GM. He was making four or five million dollars at Fox, so he had a baseline to get paid. If you make four or five million dollars as a general manager, G- GMs don't make as much as coaches. You're immediately Joe Douglas a couple years ago. Remember what it was like? The Jets didn't. He kind of had him by the balls. It's like he hadn't signed yet. He ended up making. I think someone told me almost four million dollars. I think it was like three eight. He immediately became a top five paid GM. You know, we're coaches, right? If you're making $5 million, we were making fun of Zach Taylor, who was making three nine or whatever, and he was the lowest paid coach. So John Lynch got a contract extension after he was signed, right? He got his first contract, and then he got a contract extension. I think it's fair to say that John Lynch probably makes 6 $7 million, mm-hmm. which, you know, if you factor out the coaches that are GMs too, I don't know how many GMs, Ozzie Newsom's retired, who remember when he retired, Bushadi said that, He's going to be the highest paid retired GM in league history. Remember, he's going to keep him on salary. But I don't. he's not making what Ozzie once was, which I think was like $10 million. But there's a chance that John Lynch is just in a vacuum the highest paid GM in the league right now at 7 or $8 million, right? I think, yeah, yes. Because I think part of the thing to add to that, right, it's not just that he signed a contract extension. He signed a contract extension coming off a Super Bowl appearance, right? But like and, they, not all, and he was beloved, right? Not I all mean, contract extensions are created equal. Like the one you sign when like things are just going well is different than the one you sign when you just went to the Super Bowl. Yeah. So he's making a ton of money. Now, I, I was thinking about this this weekend before we get into McVay. And I, I'll even lump McVay into this too. McVay did not get into football for the money. When you when you read and watch like his story, like he got in with John Gruden, probably making fifteen twenty grand. John Lynch, it's different when you're young, right? You just get in because you love football, and then he ended up making money. It turns out really young because he got a head coaching job at thirty one. John Lynch did not leave Fox to come back to the uh, <clears throat> the NFL for the money. You know, he he just didn't. If anything, well, he left he Fox went. because the money w- and the the money was not enough to justify him doing the thing that didn't fulfill him the way competing does. And I think it's fair to say, let's just say he started, he made the same exact salary just because the salary was so big. He came back for the juice of football. So when this story came out that they were offering him a ton of money, my first thought was, could it just be as simple as someone offers puts ninety to a hundred million dollars on the table? Same thing with Sean McVay. Wouldn't you kind of be a moron not to just, hey, let's have a meeting? Isn't that just how human beings in the business private sector? I mean, you and me have had meetings with people just just because, hey, this might be prudent to have a meeting with this person. Not because, you know, I'm not even that interested, but let's talk. Yeah. Yeah. Once you talk, and I've never had a, if any human being, I don't care who they are, gets the numbers like that, I, I think you have to be like, yeah, it's probably smart to just talk to someone. I'd say on three levels, it's smart just to talk to him because when someone puts that kind of money in front of you, it's almost irresponsible not to listen, even though without that contract, you'll still be rich for life and your kids will be rich if you want them to be Two, from a business standpoint, like you still want to get paid, even if you're doing what you love, what you're worth. And so when you have an opportunity to gain leverage, you do it. And, uh, number three, maybe in 10 years or five years or two years, your priorities change and you want to go back to TV it's helpful to have that relationship, right? Already established with whoever Amazon or, you know, obviously he has the relationship with Fox, but people come and go. It's never a bad thing. Um, so I, yeah, I think on three fronts, it makes sense to listen. If you're John Lynch or Sean McVay, even if you don't think you're going to go for both guys, sp- different McVay won the Super Bowl, So he has the ring as a coach. John has a ring too, as a player. But to win a ring as a player and then as a general manager for the 49ers, like, think at what's at stake. If he went back to TV right now, he's pretty fucking accomplished, right? Just in terms of his general manager career. He worked for Kyle Shanahan, he went to multiple championship games, and he went to a Super Bowl, and he was a GM that drafted countless Pro Bowl players. <clears throat> so he has that on his resume, which, and you kept telling me, and you were right, he's way more valuable now than he was five years ago. He has an added element just because if you put him in that Fox booth right away with Joe Buck, think of all the, they do all the NFC games and then you end up doing a lot of NFC West games. He knows those teams like the back of his hand. He's evaluated every player in the league. His value the first couple of years would be incredible, right? His knowledge of the players in the league. But I do wonder, like, he was clearly, like, Kyle wanted Mac Jones at the start. We've acknowledged that. 
it's almost like he was talked out of it. Well, who fucking talked him out of it? Not Jed York. You know, it was like John and Adam Peters. Like, you got to take the higher ceiling guy. And I give Kyle credit. Ultimately, it's not who you liked at first. He came to the decision, and they're all in board. Like, Trey Lance is on their team. If Trey Lance becomes a really good player, there is nothing the TV cash can give you than what you would become if you win a Super Bowl or two with Kyle and Trey Lance, right? That is... <clears throat> that's unquantifiable because he's already making a ton of money. His team's really good, but he has this opportunity to shoot to the fucking moon with this guy. You might as well, to me, the risk is worth it to hold on to it. Now, the rocket might crash. It, there, there's a possibility. It could be a not work, but I don't know how you'd ever live with yourself if you left and then he became, worst case, to be like Josh Allen or something. You're like, oh my God, I could have just, I'm already working hard. Like, I'm already there, <laughs> right? If I'm not quote unquote burned out or whatever, I, I, I can at least handle through, you know, the rookie contract of this guy and just see it out. And really, his rookie contract's a little shorter, right? Because he's already a year in. So, like, the next... Let's just see the next two and a half, two and a half years. Yeah, what's different about Lynch and McVay, right, is that Lynch has done TV. He worked in TV. And I, you remember, you heard Aikman was on the McVay podcast with Schrager this, this year. They did a two-parter, right? Wasn't that Aikman? Wasn't that that podcast Aikman was yeah, on? I think, I think it so. It was really good. And you could even tell Troy has this itch to be an NFL executive. He said it, that it's hard for him to scratch because of his work-life balance. He loves, you know, the flexibility that football broadcasting gives him, that being a GM wouldn't. But you can tell there's a part of Troy that thinks he would do a good – he said it. I think I could do a good job. Well, John Lynch did too. John Lynch saw the opportunity with Kyle and he jumped on it. Most people have heard of uh, this thing called U stress. It's like E U stress is how you spell it. And it's good stress. It's stress. I think sometimes we think stress is all bad, but it's not. Like U stress is a stress that comes from having a purpose and a goal and working towards something. And it's a stress that is beneficial to the person. And I think competitiveness or competitors seek that. Like John Lynch had a job that was probably fun but it didn't have any use stress in it, right? Being a broadcaster for him, he wasn't like broadcasting for his job every year. He didn't have that worry. He enjoyed going in and talking to quarterbacks and coaches and safeties and calling the game. But he even said, then you're done with the game and you and Burkhardt are hopping in the car, heading to the airport, and you didn't win or lose anything. You got nothing on the line. You got no juice. And he wanted the juice. Now, sometimes you want this juice and then you get the juice. You're like, all right, I've had my fill. I can go back to TV. But And maybe he will one day. Maybe he will soon. I don't know. But I think the difference with Lynch and McVeigh is Lynch has lived that life. And he knows there's just something that he couldn't get out of it that being in the fight gives him. So when they take a shot of John Lynch in the booth when he's the GM of the 49ers and he looks stressed, like, yeah, he'd love to be up two scores in the NFC Championship game and not sweating it out. But sweating it out is part of what he came back for. He nothing was making him sweat. You know what's the thing? What was the slogan? Was that DraftKings that had the slogan like "Feel the sweat" or something? Wasn't that one Under, of the slogans? Under Armour. No, nah, it was. Nah, it was nah, like nah. I think it was. I, I don't think it was my book. Yeah, I think it was Draft. But it's that is the point. Like he came back for that. Yeah. And I'd be a little surprised if he if he went back to TV that quickly. Now, like you said, you throw a hundred million, but. There is just the one thing, and this is why I think McVeigh, why there might have been sub some substance behind it, it's just a lot of work, and it's a lot of time. You know, it's you know they say this about like Wall Street bankers. That there's a reason they use cocaine, or they did back in the day, and, and Adderall, because you were at the office so much. What were the uh, what were the uh, the the little uh, the illegal pills? Where they get the they get the lem the lemons in uh, Wolf of Wall Street. Well, the ones that knock you out. Yeah, uh, quaaludes. Quaaludes. Yeah. <laughs> well, those bring you down, and then you got to get back up. But th th there is no like you just work nonstop, and like let's face it, like I mean I've done both. The, the, what we do now is not even close. It's not the same. And I also I, I do think there's a little disingenuous in pro sports about like the team and everything. But when you're at the top, like ultimately you get all the credit or the pressure. So you feel a little bit different. Like everyone's kind of out for themselves. It's kind of weird, you know, because in the media, I feel you just, everyone's very selfish. It's very just about you or whatever you're doing. 
with when you are on a team, it, it just is about the group. Like ultimately, you win or lose as the group. There's something you're working toward. There are relationships that are just a little different because everyone is trying to. You know, you're always having an opponent. Like even us, like who is our opponent really? There's not. I mean, we fucking we're just trying to make as much money and entertain as many people as possible, right? I mean, it's just there's not like a. Why well, don't view, people are like who is your like terrestrial radio? I don't give no. They're irrelevant to us. Our listeners, our people don't listen to them. So I, I understand where he's coming from. Like, I, I never got the high from like the wins and loss. I just hated the losses. I was like, this just didn't do it for me. But I also didn't play in the NFL, you know, or, or play a super high level of college. And I text with, you know, Adam Peters. What level of college did you play? None. Oh. I, I didn't, uh, but, but it's just, there was, I was texting with Adam Peters after they beat Green Bay. I was like, hey, man, congratulations. And we were just kind of BSing about a couple things. Uh, oh, because I was asking him about uh, the dude that got the Minnesota job. And then I started asking him because we were making fun of each other, like, you know, it's, fuck, you make a lot more money in VC. I'm like, well, I didn't have that opportunity as a Cal Poly guy. You as a UCLA student, you could have done that and been making six figures. You remember, he became a 20 for 20 for Belichick. He's like, yeah, a lot more money in that. But I'm like, nothing gives the high. This was a couple days after Green Bay. And his response was, nothing like it. And there is like, once you've been in it, and he's been in it since played at UCLA when they were fucking good at football, right? When they were competing to go to Rose Bowls. And then he got to Belichick. And he's just been inundated with it same with john lynch like bill walsh tony dungy john lynch or i mean john gruden mike shanahan like the highest of the high the highest of the high and it's just i just don't think you can go back like once you're it's all you know and i wonder if sometimes sean McVay thinks like is there more out there for me you know and i you know now those guys like adam peters makes a shitload of money obviously john makes a ton more sean McVay makes a ton i there's a balance of like you know you can get down, I think, on anything you're doing. Whether you do podcasts for a living, whether you dig ditches for a living, whether you coach football for a living, you can get negative at times. That's why I do think like the emotion's high. It's different in football, like the heat of the moment. You know, most jobs you just keep doing, so it's like it's hard to remove yourself from. Most jobs, I say this all the time, like social media always talks about vacation. When I was growing up, I we went on like one vacation my entire life. Most people do not go on vacations. <laughs> people on social media, and especially like the media, and pro athletes who ever love talking about vacations, fucking most people do not have the money to go on vacations. Like the majority of humans, <laughs> so it's like just go on vacation, get your head away. Like no, most people don't can't do that. You're just kind of stuck in what you're doing. But if you can ever just remove the the intensity of it and just take a deep breath, you realize ah, it could, it's not that bad, you know? Yeah, I think the thing with McVeigh that would be interesting is like clearly he the the foot the drug that is football gets him high. Gets him really high. And I think when you're good at it, it gets you really, really high, right? The thing with McVeigh is like, well, could he make just as much money to step away and start a family? Like McVeigh's thing is not, oh, I, I, I don't, this isn't for me anymore. I need to find something else. McVeigh's thing is, I work, I go too hard at this. I might need to take a step back. Well, what did I read? Maybe it was Peter King or Albert Brewer a week ago. <clears throat> that like his first year, Kevin Demoff told him like, you know, it's going to be hard to sustain doing it this way. Yeah. And he said, this is the only way I know how to do it. You know, I was thinking about it this morning, actually, in the car. Because I think there are a lot of parallels with John Gruden, right? John Gruden ended up going, having a really successful career, made a lot of money. John Gruden didn't choose TV. He got fired from the NFL. If John Gruden had been winning, like McVay, John Gruden would not have left Tampa Bay. John Gruden didn't, quote-unquote, get burned out. He got run out, right? If John Gruden had just had, like, they had been like the Eagles, Every year just in the playoffs, like Andy Reid, just being consistent, and he, he just could have been there 15 years. Don't you think John Gruden would have been there 15 years? John Gruden was not – I don't think John Gruden was like, I want to leave. They fucking threw a shit out the door. Sean McVay, to me, the parallels there wouldn't be equal at all. Now, John, I, I think people view him as like the young John Gruden, but if John Gruden at 36 was kicking ass, he would have stayed. Kind of talks like him. I mean, that's part of why worked for him a lot of his mannerisms he feels like you know he's worked for both the brothers so he just feels kind of like if you said he was a gruden's cousin people would believe you a happier right? gruden yeah man hey peter man um so do you think it was like a you, mixture of the two john and jay with a little you know shanahan in him do you well, the crazy thing is he didn't need that family he is great i mean he comes yeah. from a football family <laughs> I know. uh okay mcveigh does he go to tv in the next what well, where should we put the number Eight years, ten years, 
Yeah, I'd say you know he's going to get burned out. But I think he's got a three- or four-year run with the Rams when they give him a huge amount of money. Just take your shot in your 30s. You can build your family, you know, or impregnate your wife. And they're not even married. They're getting married this this summer. What he said, he wants to get, he wants to start a family. I think no, no, I know. Pregnant. Impregnate your wife is just a weird way to say it. That's yeah, she, she'll be she'll be pregnant. I would say in the next nine months, and then you still got nine months from there. So you got some, you got a couple of seasons yeah. minimum before you're like, you're not around Sean Junior enough. You, you know, because even that first year he's young and he's crying. Well, here's the other thing that could happen, right? Is you get better at it. You get better at. I think one of the things, one of the questions I would have now over the next five, 10 years is does Sean McVay, does he find a way to remain as, as successful as he's been to this point by changing the way he works? And it's hard when you're losing assistance all the time like he is. That makes it challenging. I think that makes it, I think that makes it difficult. Like I asked Kyle Whittingham one time, like, what's changed, right? He's been, he's had this program at Utah that has just been building and building and building and building and building. I mean, he won a sugar bowl. A long time ago, right? Against Alabama, like good Alabama at the time, Nick Saban, Alabama. And then he finally went to, and he said one thing that's changed is he's learned how to delegate. Like he learned how to just not be there late into the night every, all the time. But Utah doesn't lose coaches the way that Sean Mc, nobody loses coaches like McVay. Is Kyle Whittingham their defensive coordinator? What do you mean? Like he's not calling their defensive plays, is he? Kyle. No. No, Sean no, no. is their Sean He's not is their, their offensive play coordinator either. I oh I know. Oh Sean's their play caller, and you'd say his greatest attribute is him dialing up the plays. That's where I think it is difficult for Kyle Lafleur, Sean. Like, when do any of those guys get to a point where it's like, I just need to delegate a little more. No calling plays. I, if it, I was a fan of one of those teams, I'd be like, uh, what? No, yeah, like ah, uh, they would delegate literally everything else outside of so before delegating that, right? That to me is the problem for them. They feel kind of stuck. <clears throat> like I, I never take my foot off the pedal on that, and it's hard for me to half-ass it when I am the play caller. I think it's easier to do a little more seven to eight, you know, during the season. I mean, you know, higher end working hours, but not like nine to five. Yeah. When you're when you're just Nick Saban. Yeah, you go to the coach's show and then you head home for the night. I think it's a little more difficult when you're the play caller. And you're good, and your team's good, and you're like, I, I just don't feel like I fucking know enough. You know, I think that makes it difficult. You almost and need him the, to start mailing it in a little bit. Yeah, and he's like, I'm not, ma- I'm not mailing it in yet. Not mailing I'm it, in, but Stafford. Well, that's why to me he can't leave. But I just mean Stafford helps him. I would imagine too. Like maybe you don't have to do as much to get ready for a game as you used to have to do if your quarterback is basically your offensive coordinator which i think he's talked about how much how comfortable he got as the season went on with matt yeah so maybe that can dial things back a little bit for him yeah like matt uh you, you like good brady will Tuesday morning? <laughs> yeah all right uh john lynch in the next five years is he back in tv uh i think it's very predicated on what the what becomes of the quarterback if, the if quarterback trey lance is a franchise a star, quarterback he doesn't I go. think he's I think he's writing it out for a little while. <laughs> because if you just won one Super Bowl, you'd be thinking, well, can we win a couple? <laughs> right, which is what McVay has to be thinking. The difference is like Sean, you won the Super Bowl, like he did accomplish it. Now he's just gonna rattle off some records, right? Try to win as many games. John Lynch could be thinking, like, I'm already in the Hall of Fame. I'm trying to become a legend. Yeah. <laughs> like would he get in the legend? Niners? Can you, we get in the Niners Ring of Honor? Like you put together I think, 15 yeah. years. Yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, I watched some of the, I watched like the game pass version of the Rams, um, pay, uh, Rams Patriots Super Bowl the other day. And this was the week after the football was done and I needed to watch something. And, uh, you forget, I mean, I, I not, you forget the score was close, but the Rams defense played really well that day. Like McVay, we kind of mock them because their offense didn't get anything going against the, the Patriots. Right. That game, I think, was was a three nothing at halftime. You know what I'm saying? Like McVay kind of gets killed for that game because they couldn't do anything offensively. But it's not like they got their asses kicked. Their defense came ready to play. My takeaway from that game was, God, they like Aaron Donald and Sean McVay could have two Super Bowls. You know, well, they that's don't. when I, that's when I think Goff died to him. <clears throat> when he goes, he's just not good enough at the highest moment to get it done. Yeah, I think that's when you just don't ever look at him the same. 
and we've all had those moments with humans for whatever reason. Once a human goes, I don't quite look at them the same. It's in the business sense, it's hard to kind of shake that. Or break. You think about it, that's relation. You're talking relationships now too. I think relationships you can work on sometimes. Personal, right? You, you know. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But, but, I, but like, like to that. me, there's a like physical attraction. I would say is something like you see the wrong thing. They're just you might not be coming back from that. Yeah, that's true. And that's why you got to keep it smooth. Yeah. Uh, all right. Oh, so the NFL combine is this week and uh, quarterbacks are going to be on the field in prime time again. Uh, go up to a, a average football fan and ask them to, to rank the uh, quarterback big board and good luck. And it really is a contrast when you compare it to last year's draft, the incredible star power from the quarterback position. I mean, think about Mac Jones and Trey Lance even was a name. Zach Wilson was huge. Obviously, Trevor Lawrence, Justin Fields. I mean, it really was a embarrassment of riches when it came to, to draft hype. So the question is, Trey Lance, when we talk about trade value, what the Niners traded to get him last year, and where would he be going this year? Where would Trey Lance be going in this year's NFL draft? I, I texted an NFL executive who they would draft a quarterback. They're drafting really high. And if they could, they would draft a quarterback. But obviously it's just none of these guys, they don't value any of these guys close to being a you know top 10 player. And my question was, where would Trey Lance go in this draft? Assuming he had just a, a season like he had his freshman year, a good season. He said easily number one. He went three in a loaded draft off one game where he played like shit. I think he would be a no-brainer top pick in this crew. He said, I thought Fields, I'll be honest, I thought Fields was a little more physically or talented. Uh, I get Lance had elite makeup. I think that separated them for the 49ers. Or at least he did for, you know, I understand why he did for some teams. I get why they took him. So, you know, I think it's fair to say that Trey Lance – Elite character, elite physical skills. In this draft, someone said this. I didn't look it up, but Kenny Pickett two years ago threw thirteen picks, or I mean thirteen touchdowns. Like this year, he threw forty or whatever. But a couple, like it's just he exploded this year, you know. But he's not. But physically gifted, he's much closer to like a Cousins and a Mac Jones. Zach Wilson exploded, but he had some physical traits that got people's eyes. One hundred percent, and I think it's fair to say that. You know, that one's up for debate, I think, with a lot of people, how good that guy can be. And, t- and time will tell. Yeah. Like, and can, he was. Can, can, can he pick a guy? 19, 13, and 9. 20, 13, and 9. Then this season, and listen, you, you got in, you're either getting better or getting worse, 42 and 7. So it's he's kind of a one year wonder. Now, Trey Lance is a one year wonder at 19 years old. And then you physically, in the makeup, I don't even think it's a debate. One, I this would, draft isn't that good. Like the, it, DJ tweeted this a couple weeks ago that how many guys from last year's draft would go before the first guy in this year's draft? Or and I and I responded to the tweet. I said, imagine if it was like the NBA in two thousand or in the seventies when you could draft like Larry Bird a year to remove. How many guys in the two thousand twenty three class would would be picked before this? And you you would know like C J Stroud. I don't know. Will Anderson, Will Anderson would be a lock number one in this draft. I even think Bryce Young. I know he's small, but he is dramatically better than these quarterbacks. Like yeah. I, I watched Bryce Young play. I mean, I, he's got some physical limitations in terms. He's small, but goddamn, the guy can sling it. How about some of those throws he was making against? You see the thing that went viral about Nick Saban, who was like crushing his wide receivers for not practicing hard the moment Mechie and and uh, Jamison Williams went down. He's like, our backups just. They got in this mindset of they were never playing. They were always pissed off, and they were always mad. And then their time came, and they were ready to make plays, and Bryce hit them in their hands, and they're dropping balls. Like, it's on you guys. Here's the other thing with Trey Lance. So there's two parts to it. One, what you said, this year's draft class. Here's the second part. What the hell would have happened this last year for Trey Lance? You want to know what North Dakota State did last year? 2020? Pretty good, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they won the national championship. They went 14-1 and and won the national title. 
with really a non-explosive pass game. They had the number one defense in FCS football, 11 points per game. They went 14 and one. They went seven and one in their league and they won the national championship for the second time in three years or in three he seasons. Won, he won so the he, national championship, right? Well, they went 16 and zero in, uh, whatever that last year was, but he wasn't the quarterback of that team. Was he? Oh yeah, he was. Well, in, in, in 19, been 19. Yeah. Yeah. He won the natty. Was he the starting quarterback on that team? Yeah, it was his only year he's ever played. Well, 2020, yeah, yeah. So he would have won the national championship again this last year. So he went number one coming off old numbers, right? Now, now, in fairness, one thing I would say is more than likely, like the year that they went 16-0, his redshirt freshman year, he did not throw an interception, 28 touchdowns, no picks, and 14 rushing touchdowns and 1,000 yards. Like It was a perfect season for a, for a young guy. He might have had a little adversity even on a national championship team, which would teams would have liked to see. Like, how does he respond from a pick? You know? And we saw it this year. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe he would have. I mean, maybe they just would have thrown the ball less. Maybe he would have run the ball more. I don't know. I just know we'd be talking about a guy right now that, I mean, what would his career record be in college? It'd be Well, well you said absurd. they had two quarterbacks this year. He's going to fucking be Split a starting reps. quarterback in the NFL. How would they not have been way better on offense with him? <laughs> right? well, exactly. I would guarantee their coach be like, yeah, we'd rather have Trey Lance than these two guys. Yeah. So he'd be, his stock, his class would be worse and his stock would be higher. I think he'd be so good where he'd be like, yeah, I'm not doing anything at the combine. I'm just interviewing. He'd be that good. Like he'd be just in a class by himself. Well, and he'd class be, isn't very good. And you wouldn't be able to get up to number one to get him, right? They'd have no chance. Well, <laughs> who's drafting first? Lions. Jags. Jags are. So the Jags <laughs> maybe would trade the pick. Yeah, but they're drafting. The Niners are 29th. No, no, I'm not saying to the Niners. I'm just saying they might trade it to somebody. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, my yeah. point is he'd be going number one, and somebody might still be trading two, two, uh, two ones, like three ones. Like, you might again this year get someone to trade three ones for Trey Lance to draft. Trey Lance is one. never on the Niners. If he like the what would the Lions him. trade to get him to move up one spot? You know? I mean, two to one. There's their other first round pick, and you know a lot. Cody a lot says Trey Lance is younger than every other QB coming out in this draft, which makes sense. Corral, fifth year senior. Pickett, fifth year senior. Do you know Malik Willis started at Auburn behind Jared Stidham, transferred to Liberty? So I. Actually, he's a positive for me. You know, he wasn't just a small school guy. He was a SEC guy, transferred. <clears throat> so, But he's older. Uh, Eric Crocker, a.k.a. Crocky, on the stream says, any chance he would have entered the transfer portal and played at a Power 5 this past season? I I mean, you have to say yes, there's a chance. I bet he would have stayed. Do you notice, you follow him on Instagram? He Instagrams or like retweets, whatever, it's, the restories. A lot of his North Dakota State guys. I think he takes a lot of pride in that. Part think of it is I think these guys in North Dakota State go, well, fuck, we're better than half the Power 5 teams. They, they believe that there. Well, and think about it, John. Carson Wentz was a top pick out of North Dakota State. Trey would have known. He would have been projected as the number one pick this year. There, Like, there's some guys where I get why you transfer, right, to get more attention, whatever. He, But they, he would have gotten reviews that tell him, hey, man, you're going to be the number one pick potentially in last in next year's draft. We would know that already, right? Like Schefter would have tweeted that after last year's draft. Trey Lance is expected to be the number one pick in 2022. Because he was the third pick them. last year. I know, but a lot of teams would have like Georgia called him or something. Yeah, but but again, he'd be like, okay, why am I? My stock is as high as it could possibly get. I'm going to be the number one pick in next year's draft. I don't have to go anywhere. I don't have to do anything. This I'm is the saying, only program that believes. He would have had to tell people no. He would have. No, no. There is a chance to Crocky's point. I'm just saying. The argument would have been, I don't, unless it was like, you know what? I need some NIL money. Okay. Like maybe he would have done that, but he could have done that anyway, but he could have done that, right? Like Georgia, there's a booster at Georgia saying, we got two, we got a million dollars waiting for you. Beats by Dre is going to pay you $2 million to come play quarterback at USC, right? Oklahoma had a quarterback. I mean, hell, it could have just been random power five teams, right? It could have been Georgia. I mean, yeah. Wisconsin. I mean, I, the big 10 teams would have sniffed around. Yeah. Sure. Miami. I mean, so, but, but the point is like, this is the only place that thought he was a quarterback. He was going to be the number one pick anyway. I, my guess is he would have stayed, but he might've left, but either way, here's the other thing. If he leaves, he, so I stay, I stay here at North Dakota state 
where I've won a national championship, where I probably could win another national championship, where I know the system. I love the coaches. The NFL people tell me that these guys are getting me ready for the league. Why go somewhere else and potentially hurt my draft stock? Yeah, it would have been risky to go to Georgia because if he struggled there, that would have been a problem. Unless he like had this dream of winning an FCS national title <clears throat> and an FBS national title. Pretty would legendary. Pretty, pretty sick. Yeah. <laughs> been pretty sweet. <laughs> or like the – what is it the – what award was it? The Jerry Rice Freshman of the Year Award at the FCS level, and then the, or the Barry Sanders is the national. No, Barry's Oakland. What's the National Player of the Year Award in the FCS level? Jerry Rice is the Freshman of the Year Award, right? At the FCS Doak, level, Doak Walker. No, it's not the Doak Walker. <laughs> but, but anyway, like, win a Heisman. He'd be a Heisman candidate if he'd. He couldn't win the Heisman at North Dakota State, right? No, no, no. They have a different whatever theirs is. I can't remember. But Walter Pate is it the Walter? Walter yeah, Payton? I think it is the Walter Payton. Award. Walter Payton, yeah. yeah. So, um, I think he would have stayed, and I, I'm with. That's when you look at it that way. I think you and I, a long time ago, decided they didn't overpay for the opportunity to get him. Now, you overpaid if you drafted Mac Jones there, or the overpay might have been well in an alternate universe where we know where he would have been drafted. Like if we could give truth serum to all the GMs that drafted between where the Niners ended up drafting and where they were, which somebody else. Have come I'm up not going to give them as much credit on knowing that what would have transpired the following year, but I give them credit on knowing the crop of guys. They knew it was a really good quarterback class. Let's go buy one right now. Yeah. It's essentially what they did. I can't be like, well, this guy's gonna be the number one overall pick. Like, I don't even know if you're thinking like that. Cause why do you even give it? You're a year away. You're trying to win now. They were trying to win now. I think the only reason you care about that is right now, if they were in the position they were in, what would they do a quarterback? They extend Jimmy. I don't know. How would you find another quarterback right now? If you were the 49ers coming off the year, they just had, well, you wouldn't, you would just bring Jimmy back. I don't think you, you might not extend him. You might just play it out and you maybe sign Marcus Mariota. Like yeah. I mean, I, you, you there's, what is your path to finding another quarterback when you're good? It's hard. There, there isn't one. They don't hit free agency. They don't, get traded unless, really that much well, unless Matt Stafford you, they, Deshaun Watson they would have been in on that I think yeah I mean that's a uh, as, as the as uh, the internet uh, uh, analytics people like to say a suboptimal situation yeah so Walter Payton has the FCS award name for him and and also the sportsmanship of the, the the Walter Payton award in the NFL I think might be the one of the coolest trophies that exists because that's the one with the cape right the Walter Payton NFL trophy the one the man that, uh, the man of the year award Whitworth just won yeah with the gold you get the gold fucking patch it's on pretty, your it's pretty sweet bronze patch on your but but yeah Walter Payton award is the FCS offensive player of the year and did Trey win that as a freshman he did he won it as a freshman so he didn't win the Jerry right he won the do you, have a li- do you have the list of the Walter Payton Award winners in front of you? Yeah. Name off a couple. Um, him. Delvin Hodges. Samford. Who who did he play? Who was he in the league with? Uh, linebacker, I-, I think. No, no, it was the quarterback. It was like on the... Oh, Duck Hodges. It's Pittsburgh Steelers. Duck Hodges. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Cooper Cup. Jimmy Garoppolo. You might be familiar with his work. Taylor Heineke. There was a stretch of... Th- Heineke in 12, Jimmy in 13, Villanova's quarterback, John Robertson, one in 14. Got a probably, no- probably slinging money in Wall Street right now. <laughs> Works for uh, Morgan uh, Black, Stanley. Yeah, Blackhawk. Blackrock. Blackrock. <laughs> Blackrock. <laughs> and uh, Cooper Cup in 15. So it's a pretty fucking good list of players. Tony Romo and Brian Westbrook won it back-to-back years. Adrian would you say Peterson, if you win, would you say if you win this? Yeah. yeah, I mean, you're, it's, it's a lot of good NFL players have won this award. Steve McNair won it in 94. Her? You know who won it the year before McNair? You know it. You know it. Co- college coach now. Oh, actually, he's in the NFL now. He's in the he's in the NFC East. Sirianni. Quarterback. Won. I don't know. Doug Nussmeyer. Wow. He's on the Cowboy Idaho. staff, right? I know, yeah. Dave Meggett, Dave Meggett, the I mean, fucking return returner, running back, won it in '88. Yeah, better than Heisman's. I'd say it's a pretty good stretch this decade, right? Lance Cooper Cup, Jimmy G, Heineke, Heineke. 
Again, Delvin Hodges plays in the NFL at quarterback from Samford. Started games for the Pittsburgh Steelers. You can say guys got hurt or whatever. Starting game for the Pittsburgh Steelers. For the rest of his life. Oh, that's Duck Hodges. Remember when he started for the Pittsburgh fucking Steelers? Well, how many FCS quarterbacks have just started NFL games, period? That one guy a couple years ago, remember when Dak got hurt? Uh, McCarthy. Cooper Rush? Year. No, not Cooper Rush. No, the other it, guy. It was even worse. Remember, it was a big deal in his, his, in his college. They were so, like, uh, didn't have any resources. They just taped it off the phone and then posted on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, Cowboys. What I don't know his name. Him. He's a random. He was terrible. He was really bad. Was that? It wasn't this last. It was the. It was just two seasons. It was ago. the year when they won like three games. Then or four games. They got Michael Parsons because of. No, it was. It was. Oh, it did yeah, not yeah, happen. Yeah. They won six. Yeah. It was Ben Denucci. Denucci, yeah, right. Sam Madison. He, didn't he start like on Monday night or Thursday night? James he Madison. Sh- he started Sunday several night. games. Yeah. But I remember he started on national television. Yes. All right, Trey Lance would have gone number one. John, before we move uh, move along any further, let's tell the people about ButcherBox.com. ButcherBox.com slash ham. ButcherBox.com slash hammer. Right now you get two LBs of ground B for free and every order for the rest of your Lee life with your membership. They call me when Kanye. Rap, of when rapping goes wrong, Butcher Box <laughs> right now, guy, get meat. Here's what you do: you go to butcherbox.com slash ham, and once you subscribe, you get you can pick and choose any type of meats. I, I recommend obviously the steaks, really good. You can cut them up, you can grill them, or you can cut them up and make you know tacos. You can do whatever you want with them. The the chicken breasts, fantastic. Uh, they have several other options. Everything, guy, no antibiotics, no added hormones. <clears throat> Each box contains between 8 to 14 pounds of meat. 8 to 14 pounds. Depending on the box you choose, that's enough for 24 individual meals. You could feed a huge family here. Butcherbox.com slash ham. Packed fresh, ship frozen for convenience. You can save time on your next grocery store trip. Like John said, you can customize your box. And what what are you choosing from? You're choosing from 100% grass-fed beef, free-range organic chicken, wild-caught seafood, and more. And uh, it takes the guesswork out of finding high quality meat. So customize your box. You got meals stacked up and ready to go. I think like Steve Jobs' outfit. And then after Steve Jobs, uh, what's her name? What, what was the result of that trial? By Thanos. The way? Uh, uh, Elizabeth I, Holmes. I, I, don't, I don't think it's over yet. You, to me, eliminate all these little decisions from your life. Like, oh, what are we doing for dinner tonight? Nothing worse than trying to figure that out at three in the afternoon and then the meat's frozen and, oh, we got to go to the grocery store. You got to order out. You don't want to do that. Have it all ready to roll, stacked up, so many great options. This is your chance to never again have to shop for ground beef. That's right. Butcher Box is giving new members free GB for life. Ground beef for life. Sign up at butcherbox.com slash ham and get two pounds of ground beef free in every order for the life of your membership, log on to butcherbox.com slash ham to claim this deal. You give me one minute to just go fill up a little water. Yeah, I'm yeah, still, yeah. I'm still on the mend here. I'm I know, you sound good. Go get it. We'll get we'll hit some uh hit some comments while John's doing that. Let me make a little uh note here. This is a good actually comment. Eric says Andy Reid won a pass, punt, and kick competition as a kid because he was like six foot twelve year old. That video never gets old. I came across it again the other day. It's never not funny. Keep in mind, when you watch that video and it says Andy Reid and you see Andy is twice the size of everybody else, his name is spelled wrong, right? His name is R-E-I-D, but on the little graphic, it's spelled R-I-E-D. And um, yeah, it's that. I would put that video on the short list of sports videos that never, ever, ever, ever uh, gets old. So uh signing jimmy g to another contract would be a suboptimal situation agreed and luckily they're not gonna have to um they're not gonna have to be there david says of trey lance winning the walter payton award in fcs football trey is the only freshman to ever win it that is uh impressive cody says incredible how fast spencer rattler fell off that's right spencer rattler was supposed to be the number one pick um in this year's draft and now he's at uh where's he iowa state south carolina South Carolina. He did just pick up a new Chevy Silverado deal, though. So good for uh, good for Spencer Rattler on that. Jim Hudson Chevrolet has hooked him up with a 
Silverado. We were just saying, John, remember when, when Spencer Rattler was supposed to be the number one pick in this year's draft? The difference was is Spencer Rattler was smaller. <clears throat> you know, I think if you watch that, I don't even know what the, the Netflix show on was a little douchey. Uh, QBU and, or QB1? Yeah, it was just, he turned a lot of people off. I, I don't, if you were an NFL executive, a college coach, or just John Middlecoff sitting there on the couch, you went like, yeah, I don't know if I'd want to hang out with this guy. And I think that's an underrated. It's not an. I mean, it's a. It's a basically a must-have quarterback quality. Do I want to be around this guy? Because literally everyone on offense has to be around the guy. Coaches, players, staff. Like the guy fucking leads the franchise. Five of them have to want to protect him. Three of them have to want to catch the passes he throws. Uh, actually, six of them probably you count the running back have to want to protect them. Yeah, unless you're Saquon Barkley, you just don't pass protect. I'm being on the field either. No. Uh, NFL Combine starts this week, and um, it is, boy, between the NFL uh, agents basically threatening not to do the Combine and then quarterbacks that aren't really that high profile, feels like a pretty underwhelming uh, Combine this year. So what is the number one story at the NFL Combine this week? Well, I think it's the NFL players, and I think it's the NFL quarterbacks. Which these guys are not yet. No, I I think it's just not this group. This is a... This, this is kind of a struggle bus draft because the drafts are as powerful, I think, as your star quarterbacks. They don't have any. And even your star skill guys, it just – last year, Jamar Chase, Waddle, and Devontae. Devontae Smith just won the Heisman. You know, I mean, it's just – it's hard to – We've had back-to-back back drafts now of just stacked receiver classes. Yeah, I actually think we'll get that the following year. You give me C.J. Stroud, Bryce Young, right? Boom, boom. Will Anderson, you just – just damn. Uh, Jackson Caleb Smith and Jigba. Caleb Williams probably not eligible because huh? he was a true freshman. Yeah, he's a sophomore this year. True sophomore. Who's the in big? Who's that guy you just said? The, the other receiver from Ohio State. Actually, oh. this receiver class is not. This receiver class is actually kind of interesting. The Ohio uh, Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave, Drake Jackson, well, Eric think, Azucama. They got a dude from Arkansas who's sweet. I think he was pretty good. Um, I forget his name, but he's a baller. Uh, I just think it's the quarterbacks. And I think it starts to me with, I guess we'll find out more potentially, is Aaron Rodgers going to keep doing his offseason hits <clears throat> with it, Matt, Pat McAfee? If he does, I mean, Tuesday's supposed to decision. Well, uh, Benjamin Albright tweeted just kind of under the radar, maybe not under the radar, I don't know, on Saturday. Like, Tuesday's going to be a big day for a McAfee show. So yeah, I mean, maybe I, he knows something's coming. Yeah, and then Russell Wilson, Deshaun Watson, and obviously Jimmy Garoppolo. I mean, I just think we're going to find out in the next, you know, 15 days, I'd say, of just kind of who's going where, potentially. And some of these guys might stay. You know, we'll see. You were around Russell Wilson on Saturday. Uh, I did see Russ at the Stanford women's basketball game on Saturday. Yeah, he was on the mic, actually. He was doing a pump-up speech to the Stanford women's team. His sister plays for the team. And uh, it was her senior day. It's her third senior day, actually. And uh, six-year senior. And um, Russ has been to all of them. She get hurt? No, uh, she had had some injuries previously, but then, you know, fifth year senior, get the free year, six year, uh, six year senior. Good player. Yeah. It was the defensive player of the year last year in the league. They won the national title. So Russ is there and he was wearing this red jumpsuit sweatsuit with his RW logo on it. And he was wearing the red patent leather Jordans and they had a family member speak for each senior. So I was just about to walk out of the building and there's Russ on the mic talking about you guys are winners. His sister, he's like, you're the best winner I know. Coach Tara, you are the best winner in the history of it all. And each and every one of you, whatever you've done is in the past. It's time to go win a national championship. And the play starts going nuts. Russ was loving it. Russ would just felt kind of happy, enjoying himself, doing little pump-up championship speeches. So, Has, T- has Tara won as many natties as, like, Pat Summit and Gino? I guess Gino's won, like, 50. I got to check on what her natty number is. She's the winningest coach, period, ever. She's won the Coach of the Year Award in the league 16 times. How long has she been there? I mean, she's won 25 conference championships. Jesus. So. <laughs> yeah, I they guess just, you're getting pretty good at Palo Alto. Why would you leave? They just won the, the league with an undefeated record for the eighth <clears throat> time. No one's ever done it once. That's pretty nuts. So, anyway. It's just it's just quarterbacks. I mean, to me, that's – and it's this is going to come out by the end of the week and early next week, you know. We might have enough juice to do a Sunday podcast next week. Of just shit but like, down. yeah, is Aaron staying put? Does Denver need a quarterback? Is Russ staying put? That means that 
probably nothing things might not change because like where would Russ go? The New York Giants. Well, if they don't get Russ, they're not there's not gonna be a domino potentially on Russ like there would be on Aaron. I, I think the Eagles would really like Russell Wilson. But the, right, it's but, not a domino. But I'm saying but that's another one. That's a good point. But like what now maybe the Eagles would trade for Deshaun otherwise. They might, right? I couldn't trade for Deshaun until it goes away, but it's clearly not gonna go away before that you gotta trade for him, right? Yeah. I mean, the guy, they got to trade for him. I mean, it's February 28th. I mean, March 1st tomorrow, It's they got two weeks, two weeks and three days. Like I, the chances of all of a sudden in the next two and a half weeks is going to be like, Deshaun's clear of everything does not feel likely because that's just not the way no, it shit works. Right, and so other teams are not going to wait. They're going to have to make <clears> decisions. You could argue there's a chance that he's not traded at the beginning of the league year because teams are like, we can't do it yet. And so if you're Texans, what, what's your rush? <laughs> But they to me, then it long. makes and it makes sense then if you're Philly to just kind of wait and wait and wait. So they don't. Yeah, make, in Philly, you're in no rush. They don't do something else. And really, the Giants are in the same boat. And really, Miami's in the same boat now. You see, today they didn't pick up Daniel Jones's fifth year option, which is like no shit. Yeah. But uh, it just shows like they ain't tied to him. <laughs> you know, obviously they got new people. The the Jimmy trade feels like it's coming. I saw Kawakami wrote that a league source told him the talk that kind of he thought might heat up this week hasn't happened yet, but it'll start this week. And then maybe by end of next week is when he expects a deal to be done on Jimmy. Well, Kyle's Whether not, not Kyle talking this the- week. I, I, Sean McVay's not going Traeger tweeted out that he knows several coaches that aren't going. I would imagine. He said, Kyle he's, I think he said two, two others that he knows aren't going. I, I think there's a decent chance. Kyle Shanahan is not going, which to me doesn't matter at all. Like Jimmy Garoppolo's trade is going to be, that's not, that's not Kyle's job. Like ultimately, that's Parag. That's why you send Parag and John to the combine to figure that out. And they, they got a lot of work to do. You know, I mean, they got to sign corners, <clears throat> offensive linemen. You know, Lake and Tomlinson is going to get like ten million dollars a year. Because the one thing I was talking to a friend is like, if you do hit free agency, it's the best thing that can ever happen if you're just a solid starter. Because if you're like a four million dollar player, well, if you hit free agency, at minimum, you double your salary. Because there just aren't that many guys that hit free agency. The best players never hit free agency. And you get overpaid. And look at the teams that are like, the Jet, what are the Jack? They need offensive linemen. The Jets. You see some of the teams that have money, it's all the shitty teams. And usually they overpay offensive linemen. So, you know, it's just, this week really is an information gathering of how much people are, how much these players are going to cost. Like, okay, I'm interested in Stephon Gilmore. Hey, we want to sign you, Stephon to be the quarterback or to be the starting quarterback for the 49ers. What's your rate? <laughs> and then the, he asked out, like his people have to figure out like how many people want me? What can I get that number to? So you kind of figure out like where the, well, the other is thing start is start here. Who's waiting for who? Is he waiting on JC Jackson or is JC Jackson waiting on him? JC Jackson's probably going to try and wait on him, right? But he's JC Jackson's younger. I mean, Gilmore That's what I'm is saying. probably JC, last money. Yeah, but I'm saying JC's going to JC is going to get more. J.C. Jackson's going to get more than Stephon Gilmore. You'd th- longer contract, I would guess. I just, because he's younger. Gilmore's pretty fucking good when he's healthy, though. I mean, the Niners might, like, are they going to pay Ryan Jensen? They, they, they might need a center. It, we got Alex Mack. We got we to draft some internal. Well, internal I understand, but you, you're you not going to put a rookie center in front of Trey Lance, are you? I mean, I would have loved Creed Humphrey would have been good, but. I mean, Tampa Bay is going to lose all their players. Ali Marpet's like, I'm out. <laughs> Ali Marpet retired. He's 16 years younger than Tom. He's like, I can't play without Tom. <laughs> I've you seen how good it Bucks can be. are going to lose Ali Marpet, Ryan Jensen, and Tom Brady. Like, that's those guys are good. I mean, Ali Marpet's a stud guard. Jensen's a stud center, and you lose Tom fucking Brady. And Godwin is a free agent. Now, maybe Tom is bouncing because he's like this team's. Ali's like, hey Tom, man, I'm just over it. I'm smart. I went to Hobart. Hogarth, maybe, whatever school he went to, I've never heard of. Maybe he'll come out of retirement for Tom. Maybe the Niners are holding off for Tom's offensive lineman. Because <laughs> Ryan Jensen, like, you just I mean, taking all my players. Ryan, well, Ryan Jensen, Jensen's going to be would, expensive, guy. Well, I understand. He's going to be 13. I mean, yeah. Well, look what uh, the Chargers last year. Oh, by the signed, way, their right guard is a free agent, too. Alex signed Tampa. The fr- f- signed the free agent from, uh, what the fuck's his name? Ryan Lindley. Who's that? Corey, Corey Lindsley contract. Whatever he got, because the Chargers signed him last year away from yeah. the Packers. Yeah. It was a lot of money. 
And you, well, I, I'm sorry, what were you saying? You're just saying. My point is Lindsley got five years, $62.5 million. You making a Lake and Tomlinson point? I'm making a Ryan Jensen point. Oh. I, I have to text my buddies. I haven't done the O line scouting, but like Lindsley's deal. Now, here's the thing 17 fully guaranteed, so it's not that crazy, right? Would you say if Ryan Jensen, I, I'd have, to, again, I haven't studied him, but like I'd feel pretty good about giving a starting center who's a high level guy. 18, 19 million dollars fully guaranteed. Like, that's not very much money. <laughs> that's a pretty good deal. Yeah. But think of all the shitty teams, guy. The Giants, the Jags, all these teams are going to try to sign this guy. I know. <clears throat> I think the Jags are going to try to sign offensive linemen for a lot of money. As they, they have isn't money. that what, you, as they should. But you can't be bidding against the Jags for offense for sales. I know. I know. Anyway, but to your point on quarterbacking, the first domino potentially comes <laughs> Tuesday, depending on what Rodgers does. And Rodgers staying put in some hand for the Packers, on some hand would be good for the Niners, well, obviously be bad for them if he, like they'd rather him be the quarterback of the Broncos than the Packers, um, just from a competitiveness standpoint. I, From entertainment standpoint, I'd rather him be the quarterback of the Packers. But uh, if he stays put, then I think Denver would be on the Niners list as teams that then would potentially be interested in Jimmy Garoppolo. It's crazy NFL contracts. Lindley, you're like, you gave him $62 million. And he's like, well, actually just $13 million signing bonus. Yeah. Centers get really screwed. Well, what did Alex Mack make last year? Like Probably maybe five, five total, but yeah. yeah. But like, think about the difference between the center now and the tackle. Now, obviously, Trent Williams is, you know, I don't know who the best center in the league is, but he got 60 guaranteed. 60. That's what Amari Cooper got. I watched uh, Blind, like the first, I don't know, 45 minutes of Blindside this weekend it was on. And uh, I'd forgotten the way it opens. Is It opens with Joe Theismann's injury, you know, and it's like the number one, the, mo- the highest paid player is the center. And the most important guy after that is the guy protecting his blindside. And it's got all these, like, clips of, Highest paid player is a center. Uh, sorry, the quarterback. I was thinking I had centers on my mind. Um, and the next important, most important guy is the guy protecting his blind side. But like the center's in charge of a lot. Yeah. I and know. for for me with a rookie quarterback, like or not a rookie, Trey's not a rookie, but, but that would be is. a play. I mean, but he kind of is. Yeah. I don't <laughs> know if you can go cheap there, but anyway, let the dominoes fall. You can't pay, you, but you can't pay everybody, right? No, but that's just part of trading Jimmy Garoppolo. Is just, that is money that you now have available. The other thing, did you see the Packers are going to the UK? I think it's a I think it's a Packer home game also, which is kind of crazy. So they made this graphic on the uh, Packers Twitter page going to London. They put them in uh, Abbey Road there in the crosswalk like the Beatles. Beatles there's only four of them. They put that feels five like a pretty guys. that feels like a pretty good London team because they usually send like the Jags, the totally. Dolphins. That's that feels like the best London team ever. I don't know, right? It's, well, it depends. Are they banking on if Aaron's their quarterback? It's the best London team ever. Yeah, it feels like the the London games are consistently terrible. No Rodgers and no Devontae in this graphic. I mean, they're both the, well. Staff. Aaron's. I just contract. don't think he, I don't think you want to piss him off though. You don't want to force him anything like. And Devontae is a free agent. Did you see that the Cardinals are doing the Mexico game? And Mayoko tweeted that, like, I think the, they're going to send the Niners to play them in Mexico. But that's a I did, I did not see game. that. Yeah, still. Well, I did what's not wrong see that with tweet. that? I don't know. Just suboptimal, John, if you're the schedule, if you're part of the, you know, for uh, Michael Slap, he's got to deal with a lot there. <laughs> UC Davis is Michael Slap. That's on I his. That. I, I don't mind a good mexico game you haven't i mean let's face it it's just they've been losing they've, the cardinals that stadium it's getting a little weird playing the cardinals i, I don't mind them mixing it up a little bit it, uh estadio azteca but remember wasn't that the field was really shitty or was that a rainstorm that made it shitty or was it just randomly uh, just i don't shitty? remember i just remember they were threatening not to play there i i do think the field has some question marks <laughs> not ideal but it is grass you know the diners are big on the turf thing it's, it's grass guys speaking of uh the cardinals john Kyler Murray Jesus uh, put, Christ. put out a statement. Uh, well, his agent put out a statement, but you know we could talk about whether or not this was Eric Burkhart's idea uh, uh, or Kyler's idea. Uh, but Kyler wants to be direct and loyal with Arizona fans and the great community of the Valley. Number one, he absolutely wants to be your long-term QB. Number two, 
he desperately wants to win a Super Bowl. Then there's a bunch more words. And then in bold, actions speak louder than words in this volatile business. And then some more words. And then in bold, Kyler remains hopeful that the organization chooses to commit so that he can continue leading the Cardinals to further success and value for many more years to come. Do you think he mailed in the playoff game because he was worried that they weren't going to pay him? I don't know, but he definitely looked weird in the playoff game. Because he had struggled. There's a difference between like when he has a bad game and difference. The How does mailing in a playoff game. game help you if you're worried that they're not going to pay you? Well, Doesn't I, playing well make them pay you? Well, how the fuck does this, does this, uh, whatever the hell this thing is. I mean, guy, this is the longest. You you can't write that much, man. Hey, listen, I, I know this guy a little bit. Just text with him every once in a while. But, the agent, and listen, I, I, I don't know who did what. I'm just making an educated guess. This came from Kyler and his and his dad. This is so stupid. You can't tell me any agent worth their salt who's been in the business goes, yeah, it's a good idea. Let's just throw this out there. Basically saying, pay me or what? Like, that's not how it works. Lamar Jackson didn't do this last year. And, and, and hey, Kyler, you can't hold fucking Lamar Jackson's jock in terms of what you've accomplished. Yet through three years, Lamar, do you know what he did came back? Just played the fourth year. He didn't put out this, what is this? What's the point of this? I don't understand the point of this guy. Like, you're not, it's 2022. The fans, you it's, act like you're some huge fan favorite, like you're Larry Fitzgerald or whatever. I'm a fan. I'm like, hey, Kyler, what the hell happened this year? Like, you think I'm on your side? I mean, I want to be on your side, but I watched you shit the bed the last six games and that playoff game is one of the most embarrassing things I've ever seen. It's one thing to like, have like a 40 year old Dan Marino when they lost that game, like 50 to three to the Jags. Remember that when we were kids? It was like the, one of the biggest playoff blowouts ever. It was like 63 to seven or something like Dan Marino's last game. Sometimes you playoff games get weird. Yeah. Old guy, guy gets hurt. Kyler, you're like 23 in the prime of your life and you got throttled. Well, and the the problem isn't just the result of the playoff game. It's like there are there have been, and uh, I think most people agree from legitimate places, concerns about his ability to be a leader. I've heard it. You've heard it. We've all heard like, you know, Steve Young said the thing a couple of years ago. Doesn't that, he doesn't to that kind of refl- doesn't that kind of reflect? Yes, like- I mean, all the pieces are there. I think it's fully legitimate. And by the way, like this whole thing where he del- the Instagram thing was a real thing. Yeah, it was wasn't a real. A, it wasn't drama. the marketing ploy. <laughs> and it's and it's just not what most drama free leaders of organizations do. It's but just not. About, and the there's no PR battle to win. That's the other thing. No- well, why, why did he do this? Because the combine starting this week, and guess what? He's going to meet with them, right? <clears throat> the irony is he also represents the coach, so it's a little weird. But one thing he wrote in there, I didn't, I, I couldn't read it, but so I heard someone say this, is that he put out an offer to the Cardinals like a week and a half ago and has not heard anything back. So it's kind of like an F you. Like, we want to sign a deal. I Can you imagine the offer that he sent them? It, it wasn't like, we'll give you, you know, $28 million a year. It's like $44 million a year, I'm sure. 140 guaranteed. They're like, are you fucking kidding? You think we're going to sign your guy to $140 million right now? You, am I fucking snorting dirt? What, what are we talking about, Eric? We are not signing your quarterback right now, especially when there's precedent last year on Lamar Jackson, who kind of is your guy's comp. How about how about this line, John? Uh, the the uh, uh, Kyler, while under the extremely challenging circumstances of walking into a three win team with the last ranked offense and the toughest division in football, speaks for itself. The Cardinals are the only franchise in the NFL to have proved by three or more wins in each of the last three seasons. Kyler was tasked with stepping into a tough situation and named the starter on day one of his arrival. He has delivered and exceeded all reasonable expectations along the way, winning the NFL Offense Rookie of the Year. Guy, oh, what, followed what, by back-to-back Pro Bowls in the ultra-competitive and QB-loaded NFC. But he's you're just listing stats that we all know. Like I, what I, what I don't understand is like, to me, they're trying to get this out in the public. Like, hey, we're going to try to negotiate this week. That's part of it. I'm going to see you guys. That's that that to me was a calculated move by them. Even though this is so stupid, this uh, is moronic. Sh- Schefter wrote, "Here are the QBs in round one to sign a long-term deal before their fourth NFL season in the past decade." Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Deshaun Watson, Jared Goff, who just gone to the Super Bowl, Carson Wentz, Ryan Tannehill. So two 
100%. They do not regret a second. There's two out of the six, right? Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes. And the they would one on field. Deshaun is not the, it's not an on field regret. No, but he's just got issues. Like he yeah. missed a season. Like that's like ultimately like, Oh, you missed a year where you, did you tear your ACL? No, I had uh, masseuses suing me and I demanded a trade and I just didn't show up. It was very bizarre. The other three, those teams regretted it. Golf Wentz, Tannehill. Yeah. Um, Rams I would put pivoted. I would I would put Kyler. You'd have Josh Mahomes in their own tier. Watson kind of in his own world. Like you said, he's closer to Mahomes and Allen from a player, but the the off the field is just a red flag now. Kyler's better than the bottom three, but I would not include him with the top three. No. Would you? No. No. Part of getting, you know, part of the deal is like being the total package, right? And somebody on the stream here said, Eric says, you know, things are bad when your statement is the length of a small book. It's just, it's, it's weird, man. Here's something that he wrote in the second line. It was important to Kyler. So that, this tells me, this is not to me agent driven. <clears throat> this is Kyler driven. He, he's very mad right now. They've given a, he thinks that I've made the Arizona Cardinals, right? They were yes. shitty when I showed up, and we've been winning because of me. So he's a fucking massive me guy. His, he's just an egomaniac. I, I, I can't stand this kid. But then he wrote, it was important to Kyler that this proposal reflected all of the following. Uh, it's hard to even stay on the same lines. It was important to Kyler that this proposal reflected all of the following. Provides financial protection is in line with the current quarterback market that compares with his results alongside relevant comps, lowers his 2022-23 salary cap, doing you guys a favor, uh, <laughs> to allow the Cardinals to re-sign other deserving teammates and add additional free agents, and most importantly, represents a real commitment from the organization to see their ultimate goals aligns with his number two above. Well, Kyler... Oh, John, I, and that part's in italics. Sorry. I can't sign a player to an historic deal, because this would be the biggest deal in the history of the franchise, just based on previous quarterback deals. That you've got me to the playoffs one time over the last two years when we should have made it both times, and then you were the worst playoff player we've like ever seen. Jimmy G struggled or whatever. He was dramatically better against the same team. Dramatically. And again, internally, not beloved as a leader. Why do they add the picture of him doing like the touchdown dance? And the logo. Which, you know. Well, the statement is from my agent. Oh, but here's my logo at the bottom. I mean, you're, I love the idea of writing this in the third person. Like, who really wrote it, right? Him or his dad or I don't know. But like all of the Kyler. Kyler wants and 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 Kyler thinks and he thinks and he's worth. Well, here's the, here's the other thing, Kyler, where I don't think people are going to feel that bad for you. Hey guy, you know what's crazy? Kyler makes seven hundred and forty grand a year. Oh wait, Kyler signed a fully guaranteed four-year, thirty-two million dollar contract. Now it's not as great as the Bradford days, but no one's crying poor. He was the number one overall pick. <clears throat> you could argue Lamar Jackson, like God damn, that guy got fell to thirty-two, makes nowhere near these guys' type coin, just re just represents the organization incredibly. It's just. How is there been one person that watched Lamar the last couple of years either talk or play and be like I don't I like this guy, you know Kyler's got this sulky fucking attitude. He wrote a third person thing that he forced his agent to tweet. This guy's a clown guy. A clown. And hard to read font. Is he going to hold out? That's the other question I have watching this. I, well, doesn't he have a holdout written all over him? Feels like it. Yeah. Which sign me up for that? I I just don't think he feels like. He thinks he's like got Devonte Adams status with the Packers or something. Like fans are gonna get. But Devonte doesn't act like this. No, I know. I'm. But my point is, you know, like yeah. someone's is usually or Debo. They, they're like, you do not mess with our guy. You sign my guy, right? If, if I was a Cardinal fan, I'd be like, what is going on with this kid? Well, the Cardinals have been bad, but they are. You know, like if you're a Cardinal fan, the last ten years, you've actually had some better football than. Well, if you're you've had age, good football, if you're our Kyler age, Murray. you've seen a lot of good teams. Yeah, right. You've and had these guys act pretty normal, right? It's like, who have you seen? I don't know, Larry Fitzgerald, Honey Badger, Carson Palmer, Kurt Warner. Kurt Warner. <laughs> who have you guys seen? Anquan Bolden. Like we've just seen some pretty high level guys 
that acted pretty good. Did normal. you say honey? Sorry, did you say honey badger? C- Calais Campbell's another guy. I'm pretty sure he won the Walter Payton Award once upon a time. It's like we know what just high level, highly. We, paid we guys. interviewed Calais at the Super Bowl. Remember, he was very cool. Just an impressive guy. Like their team, when they were winning with Arians, was full of just high level dudes. High level dudes. Remember how happy Larry was? Just it was just a high level operation. It doesn't like their operation feels weird now. And it starts with him. Yeah. KM. Even though I don't hate his logo, to be honest with you. Somebody said on the street, it's like a knockoff Brady. But really, I mean, everybody's logo is this right now. Just I initials. Actually, I, I think it's not. Because it's, it's a number one, right? You see the oh, one in there? I, I even like it more Number now. one is the left, the, the, the left post of the K. I got to be Which honest. Is, I, I, I do not hate his logo. TB12? <clears throat> the TB12 school, Russell Wilson school of logos? I was going to go, yeah, it's got some Russ. More Russ than TB12. Every every player logo is yeah, clone logo right now. I do like the the one is pretty solid in there. Yeah. Well, you have to have your number has to work into your. Does yeah. Russell's? Oh, yeah. The three for the W. Oh. The three. TB12 obviously goes without saying. Russell's, I mean, looks, good. Russell's looks good, guy. It does. Yeah. They, but here's the thing. Like with all your logos, like where can I. Are you the only one wearing your logo? Every player is just. They're the only ones wearing their logo. Tom's expanded. Tom's has expanded, but for the most part, it's just, I don't see a guy walking down the street in a KM logo shirt. They just <clears throat> Cardinals, yeah. Nike. Obs- uh, kind of just obsessed with yourself type deal. Well, I mean, look, I don't, if I were to start an athlete, like I'd want a logo, I want my, uh, my logo on my shoes, you know, or yeah, it'd be cool. I get it. It's just a way that the merch company makes you feel good. Michael. Yeah. That one worked out. That one worked out. But uh, NFC West is getting weird, John. Now, maybe it's going to settle. Russell stay, McVale stay, and Kyler, who knows? It could, around the Niners, have gotten, you know, like if McVeigh left, Russell Wilson left, who knows? But well, McVeigh's to me, it's where it's, they could really they're sell, By the way, they're selling 100 KM shirts total. They're not selling that. No one's buying that. No. No chance. Zero. They would be able to sling some Russell Wilsons if that's on the Nike too. To me, Kyler could hold out, and Russell Wilson could get traded. Like that, to me, that is the Niners went zero and four against those two teams last year. Zero and four. So if that happens, that's a huge win for the Niners. Like yeah. you want to hold out, which creates chaos, and you want Russell Wilson to in the next couple of weeks force a trade to the Eagles or something. Which again, you might have to play them in the playoffs or whatever, but. You do have you do struggle against Seattle. You get Russell out, like I would expect. I, anything less than two and zero is a disappointment. If you tell me Russell Wilson's traded, I don't give a shit who they get back. Who? Well, who would even be their quarterback? If, if I told you they did a swap with like the the Vegas and they had Derek Carr, I'd be like, well, oh, okay. But like, if it was like the you know the Eagles gave him three ones, two twos, and Jalen Hurts like two and zero. No. Yes. Now Kyler to me would have hold out written all over him, then show up. Week one, but be surly. But you could argue he's surly when he's there. So what would really change? Well, I mean, it's just at a. I I think there is a ultimately a fraying that comes when your leader is not a great leader. It doesn't necessarily keep you. It's all relative. It whatever your ceiling is, though, it keeps you from sustaining that. So it doesn't mean you can't be a playoff team. It's just what's your ceiling. He can keep you below it. And you're right to your point. They have struggled again. now. Obviously, Colt McCoy beat him this year, so it wasn't just. Kyler, but I, I do think people underestimate Seattle a little bit in the sense that <clears throat> everyone's like, Seattle's fucked. Well, they went seven and ten. They missed Russell Wilson for I think three games and they started Geno Smith. They went three and three in the division. They swept the 49ers, who were in the NFC championship game, and they beat the living shit out of the Cardinals week eighteen, who also was a playoff team. Like, I would imagine internally they go, you know, if Russell's healthy and playing gives us 35 and 5, if you don't think we'll be a factor next year, you haven't been watching us. And I would agree. Now, does that mean I don't think they're a 13 win team, but you can't convince me they can't win 10 games if Russell's healthy and they roll it back? Yeah. Because I, I, I believe that to my core. Because I've seen it for years. They've had a flawed team for a half decade and they've been winning 10, 11, 12 games. So you there- telling me that they can't, do you agree that if he comes back, like I don't just they could sweep the Niners again. Like that's that's tough. 
right? They, they could win 10 games. Absolutely. But I think everyone will be like, oh, they'll just be average. Well, yeah, I think they'll be slightly a better than average as long as they got number three, R3, you know, on their squad. No, I think you just did the Steph Curry logo. Oh, yeah. The... Uh, that's what Chasing Gold said. His his logo is very Steph. Oh, is that is that what it is? It's like an it's like the three sign, the S you know, C. What, is there a third? Because the old one was SC thirty. Is the new one doesn't have his number in it? I don't think right. Unless the three and the zero, you know, combine. Where's the three? In well, the Steph's three logo. fingers, right? Oh yeah, the three finger. That's what it is, right? It's three fingers. It's like throwing. But I'm up saying in his fingers. mind, there's a three and there's a zero in it, so you could just. Yeah, yeah. It. No, it is three fingers, though, right? Is that what the logo Steph's logo is? Three, like yeah. kind of like three fingers going up. You know when guys hit nail a three and they go like this. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what that is, right? I didn't realize that until you just did that, but I think you're right. Uh, there's an S. There's a C. There's a high wing, whatever that means. I'm reading a breakdown of it. The celebration of the game's most valuable shot. So I, I don't the know. Three pointer. The, the brand, the brand logo breakdown. When when Haberman and Milkoff comes out with a new logo, we're gonna do a full brand breakdown. It's like this stable base represents the strength that is found from blue collar work. You know, so every team puts out a logo, and it's like, and these three, th- these three points represent the three points of pride in the city. <laughs> It's always something deep that you're like when 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 Grigson got the Colts job, you know the horseshoe in the horseshoe. There's like a a hole in in like every probably four inches around the horseshoe. Yeah, and every single one he created like a you know like a a name you know like a Colt. Oh, and, and he, but he he named each one. It was like character, you know. Yes. <laughs> Uh, tenacity, you know, it was just accountability. Sort of those, yeah, it was just, it was like so much community fuck? service. You're the fucking GM, like Jesus Christ. Was community one of them? Community service, I, dedication I, I to the people of Indianapolis. I think there are six or eight holes in every single one of them. It was so stupid. I love that stuff. One thing, Mike McDaniel's. I've watched just way too many Mike McDaniel interviews over the last like couple weeks. <laughs> Just said that Kyle really one thing that he does feel more prepared for the head coaching job has really helped him like ideas for like team meetings and you know boards and you know state you know what we tell players and stuff that you know you, you you read the Belichick thing like they were never involved in that and if you're just involved into like hey what's a good message this week for the and if Kyle's asking you like what would you do do you have any ideas for like what I should show the team on Monday morning or Wednesday right, right. morning when we see him like Hagler Hearns yeah exactly like. <laughs> The the fight scene from three hundred. Check it out, boys. This is this is us versus the Colts. You know, but but seriously, like you have to, you got to come up with fresh shit. You know, yeah, yeah. I'd run out. Be like, all right, boys. The scene from the Notebook. <laughs> you guys want to see this uh, this threesome from Wild Things? There you go. Under- underrated movie too, by the way. Uh, what was Doug Peterson was always giving them ice cream. Remember. I got some well, ice cream that, waiting for you. Yeah, he did that after the thing. After the meeting. After the meeting. But it was his kind of way to try and keep people excited, to reward them. Yeah. Because I remember the one clip where he's like, I don't know what we had last week. That, that was no Hagen dazs and I promise <laughs> you that's not going to happen again, or whatever the ice cream they had was. Was there any doubt in your mind that, to me, the people that would get most joy out of it would be the linemen, D-tackle, D offensive interior linemen, so your tackles, your interior offensive linemen, and probably underrated quarterbacks. I could see, you know, a lot of quarterbacks just fucking they can yeah, see whatever. Especially the backup QB. I could see like some linebackers like I don't touch processed sugars. Right. <laughs> and receivers are like the guy that you hang out with that when you go out never wants to eat, just wants to drink. Yeah, it's like how do you stay so skinny? Franklin Fountain. That was the place, right? In Philly that you took me. Oh, That's that like the good, old school. Yeah. I've got a photo of us from that place. Middlecoff with hair, I think. Just plowing through some banana splits or whatever it was on like a that was, <laughs> that was fucking good all right a few other things john uh but oh how about our guy you showed me this guy's photo the other day let's see i think i have it here for people watching the uh the stream yeah Ole miss is four-star defensive tackle who had a home run for the baseball team over the weekend an oppo taco his name is Taiwan Malone. His nickname is The Tank. 
He's 310 pounds, which for reference, as I read somewhere, that's 60 to 70 more pounds than Frank Thomas weighed in college. Jesus. And Frank played tight end at Auburn, right? Frank played tight end at Auburn. This guy's a D-tackle, though. This guy's a D-tackle. Also, true freshman, too. So he really has not been in the program long lifting and eating. He is a true freshman. Red-shirted this year for Lane. Lane retweeted it. Like, this guy was several big offers if you go to his rival. I mean, that home run, opposite field, can you imagine what this guy does sometimes at practice? Some of the, like, just their baseball guys who are... I'm sure they have countless guys on their team who are going to be drafted in the top, like, five rounds. Just watch this guy with pure power of just fucking hitting bombs. When's the last time a defensive tackle... Because I had a couple people like, what's the big deal? What's the big deal? He's an (laughs) SEC defensive tackle playing baseball. That's insane. Like, Jameis. Jameis wasn't that big a deal. I mean, it was, but he was a quarterback. And he pitched. Like, it was like, that makes sense. We've seen that before. Um, I told you, like... 34-inch arms. Bryant Young also played uh, first base for the Notre Dame baseball team. You've been like, what? Right? 80-inch Eight, you know, wingspan, John. Is that good? You know that Aaron Donald played right field at Pitt? <laughs> you know Fletcher Cox? You know, he uh, he was a pitch hitter for the Mississippi State baseball team. I'm like, Jesus. That doesn't, doesn't happen. Yeah, I mean, we, we, uh, is 80-inch is inch wingspan good? 34-inch arms. arms. Yeah, fuck yeah, that's yeah, long. Look at this guy. Go watch the highlight. He is nimble, I would say. Like, he is athletic. Like, when you say defensive tackle, you go, ah, like, what does he look like in a baseball uniform? Good. I mean, he just looks good. He just looks – he plays first base, right? Does he play first? I I, I mean, I would guess, yeah, he'd have to. I mean, well, I'm just saying, like, first basemen tend to have, you know, good feet. You have to have good feet to play over there. I mean, you don't have to, but if you're good at it, you have good feet. Uh, Incredible. Check out his baseball – Says infield. So, yeah, he plays first base. I mean, look at this guy. Here's some photos. 6'4", 315 is what he's listing at here. But I I saw 305 somewhere. Um, ranked the number 25 first baseman in the nation for baseball. But you said he was. I mean, yeah, he was a, a four-star defensive tackle. So he probably could have gone to, like, Texas. His or- neck! He probably could have gone to a lot of sweeter places for baseball, even though Ole Miss is pretty good, right? I bet the top baseball programs wanted him slowly at baseball. Alabama offered him at football. I wonder if there's a chance maybe they would have been interested with him at football, but wouldn't allowed him to play baseball because I can't see Saban. He ain't letting you do both. Where Lane's like, fuck, you can do whatever you want here. Lane Lane is happy to let you do whatever. (laughs) Golly. Wow. Stud. Maybe he he might. I mean, by the time he's ready for the bigs, the baseball season might be here. Did you did you watch St. Mary's game? Uh, I did watch. I watched some of it. Yeah, not all of it. I watched a lot of college basketball. <clears throat> First time all all year. Watched four or five. Eh, four or five strong. Watched two basketball games, <laughs> but it was Baylor, Kansas, and St. Mary's, Gonzaga. Good games. I do think that college basketball. It's maybe it's always been this way, but you know, for the most part, like you used to get way better effort in the NBA. I was bored last night, so I put a little money. I text Dickinson. I was like, you know, who do you like tonight? Mavs, Warriors. He's like, you know, plays out. Warriors been weird. Take the Mavs. It's like, you know, fuck. I'll put a couple hundred dollars on the Mavs. John Dickinson. They, they were beating the shit out of the Warriors. I'm like, I'm never yeah. asking anyone. I was gonna take the Warriors, and then somehow they won. It was like this is an incredible call. But it felt a little lucky. But my point is, that game, sloppy, a little weird. The NBA is just, the, Baylor, Kansas, Gonzaga, St. Mary's, you're watching kids lay it on. The effort's way better in college. I, don't think it's, I, I think it's a not a better product because the players are better in the pros. But I understand where it's like, if you're a college basketball guy, you're like, I, the NBA just puts me off. Yeah, if you get Warriors, Sixers, and they're both trying, it's awesome. But that is not, that is the minority of college basketball games, right? Like, if I just turned on Arizona, Colorado, what would you rate the effort in that game? Pretty high? Yeah, I mean, especially Colorado's was a 10 out of 10. <laughs> yeah, just throwing haymakers. Sellout, which is 11,000. But it, a, a, a sellouts really don't – like, when you're in the building for a football game, let's say, there's a difference between a 30,000 sellout and an 80,000 sellout, right? For basketball, there's not a huge difference – I don't think. Did you see how many people were at the Syracuse Duke game this weekend? Wasn't it like thirty thousand people or something? Thirty three thousand people at Duke Syracuse this week. 
you know, Coach K's last game, whatever. Duke throttled him. You see how old Bayheim looks? Holy moly. Bayheim. He's 77, but he looks old. So Colorado was 11,000. My point is, in an arena, 5,000 people can feel just as big as 30,000, depending on the gym. Now, if it's 5,000 in a place that seats 20, but if it's 5,000 at Cameron Indoor, like it's rocking. And I love what you get from a college game is you get all these, everyone's standing all around the court. You're getting court storms left and right right now in college basketball. I don't know if you've noticed, but court storms are everywhere. The brands are what drives college athletics. The stars are what drives the NBA. So now that Baylor's a big deal, you know, North Carolina, Duke are the historic ones like in the last 25 years, but Kansas is massive. Arizona's big again. UCLA's big again. Like you, you get, bro, Arkansas, who's a perennial, who was a oh, former power. You did you watch them call the Hogs? Oh my God, it was incredible. <laughs> it who was, was awesome? Who, who beat Auburn the other day and stormed the court as the lights were flashing? That was a crazy. Like two weeks ago, um, I watched Villanova UConn the other day. It was a it was an incredible environment. It's just environment. This is where we get now. This time of year, like college basketball tends to take it up a notch. And uh, yeah, man, delivered. I think it. I think it was the Hogs. I think was I, it Arkansas I saw, that beat Auburn? Yeah, you might be right. About I, that. I saw because I saw a tweet that said the court storming shows you what the fan base believes. Of the it two was teams. Arkansas. Yeah, they stormed the court against Auburn, but not against Kentucky because they beat Kentucky on Saturday and they didn't storm the court. So was that like an fu to? Ca- Did you see Calipari was out eating in Fayetteville? At like some nice place. I mean, kind of, you know, it looked like a barbecue joint or whatever, but I bet it was one of the better restaurants there. They started doing pig suey to him and he was laughing, but like the whole place started doing it to him. He's just sitting kind of at the middle table in the restaurant and the whole place just breaks out into a pig suey. That's Arkansas, fantastic. The thing with the SEC, this kid's playing baseball. I, I don't think people quite understand what Nick Saban has brought to that conference, the money. Because basketball guy... They are fucking good everywhere. Like even well, what's his name? Who's going to get fired probably at Georgia? But he he was making. I think he's making first, like five. Tom Crean's making like five million dollars. You see their team's record? It's like they're, they're bad, terrible. Yeah, they're, they're bad. bad. They're bad. But you're right. The SEC went out of its way to just start hiring coaches. Um, when and you they guess spent a lot of money. Fire Kareen, when you guess when they fire Kareen that they don't go after like Guy Haberman or John Middlecoff? Couldn't you see them going after a real coach? Like someone oh, yeah. with some juice? Oh, yeah. I mean, what, and, what if I and, told you that they hire Rick Patino? Would you be shocked? No. Those are Rick Patino. Here's five years, 20 million. Let's go. Well, they've just like um, uh, Buzz Williams is at AM. Frank Martin's at South Carolina. Mike White's been at Florida for a long time. He doesn't quite fit the bill of like someone stolen from somewhere else. But Mississippi State pen, uh, paid Ben Howland a lot of money. Obviously, LSU is. Will Wade is somehow just making it. Um, I think, but I think Will Wade's a legitimate coach. Well, coach he is a Katie legitimate coach. I'm just saying, like the FBI thing, like they are. Nate Oates was a hot commodity when Alabama hired him. Obviously, Musselman is a fanta- fantastic college coach. Rick Barnes is killing it. Rick Barnes, I, I think we talked about it. Kentucky has not swept Tennessee in like at least uh, several years. Like Rick Barnes beats Kentucky once a year for a long how time. Many, how many SEC teams are going to the tourney? Eight? Um, I would say looking at it right now, probably one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, seven, maybe eight. I don't know. Is Florida I'd Alabama, have to check. Is Alabama one of those? Yeah, I think so. Hey, I how about Buzz? A and M good? Um, I would put them on the outside, probably, but even they're they're probably a top seventy net team, which is not early on in his development. I'm a big buzz guy. Like uh, let's see. Uh, let me see what what uh, Lenardi has today. Well, say, would you say St. Mary's is a lock now with that win? Like they were already a top twenty five team. Like how do they not get in? Yeah, because like you said, they were already a top five team, a top twenty five team. Did you uh, know they were that good? Like I, I mean, obviously they. I just knew they were top twenty five. Yeah, like watching had, them play, I was like, they're a legitimate basketball team. Six teams right now from the SEC, says Lenardi. So you have St. Mary's in? Uh, yeah, St. Mary's and I think San Francisco. It's a three-bit league plus Gonzaga. Oh, not bad. So Big Ten's going to have EKBZ says nine. Yeah, that's what Lenardi has right now. I'll tell you, you know who looks, I think, 
it's hard to look better on television than Michigan. Just their colors, their court. I don't. I watched some of their game. Was it yesterday? They were they on. Yeah, yesterday morning they were on against Illinois. I think it was Michigan Illinois is what it was. Good game, and it just looks fantastic on TV. Looks Cockburn so good. Making plays. Kofi was making plays. <laughs> it was on CBS. So, uh, Major League Baseball season, John. Um, you know, I was thinking about. I was listening to some MLB Network radio on Sirius XM. What the fuck are they talking about now? It was actually really good. It was, they're just doing Mount Rushmore for every team. And it was really interesting. I was, I, it's classic bad, like, I, I loved it. Cause it'd be like, all right, who are the big four for the Mets? They'd be like, Piazza. They would just go, I was actually like old school, just entertaining radio. You know what Keith I'm Hernandez, saying? make like, it. Keith Hernandez. You would have enjoyed it, I think. I enjoyed it. I just enjoyed it. It was like, who are the who, four who, best who, players? Who was hosting, who was hosting the show? It was Franzen was one of the guys. Oh, <laughs> And they would just have like somebody who covered the team for a long time on and be like, all right, what do we think? And I just, I was like, yeah, you know, you're just going through, it's like Piazza, Daryl Strawberry, uh, Dwight Gooden, Tom Hernandez, Siever. Tom Seaver, you know, it was just fun. Just good, classic, clean, fun. You know, Easy the problem is you're that. not supposed to be doing evergreen topics at the beginning of your season. So problem. Who knows yeah. when, when baseball is going to be here. And I think the tough thing, my, here's my one take on that. A uh, take I have is that, I think the players are constantly, and I understand it because they feel like they're getting screwed, trying to win a PR battle that the fans are just not interested in because it takes so much effort to find out whose side I'm supposed to be on, to like really do the research because it's complicated. It's complicated to try and figure out, should I be on the player side or the owner's side? And people don't have the time for it, A, and B, it's just not interesting. And so there's always this PR battle that I think the players are trying to win that fans don't really have much interest in. And I don't blame fans. Like I, I don't blame fans. You just, it's, I didn't sign up for sports to like have to decipher collective bargaining agreements. It's just not it's, what it's I not, come to It's not the steels workers union getting fucked here. You know, that's, yeah, that's a big part of it. And, and I do think the timing of everything, like we are going through some pretty weird economic times right now. And I, I just don't know if, you know, people don't have the capacity you could argue no matter what, but I, I just think it's hard to wrap your head around. Like, because the media can get very big on, like, I'm rooting for the millionaires over the billionaires. It's like, well, I mean, the guys in baseball, obviously the young guys get screwed. There has to be some ability to, like, once you get drafted, your clock starts. But we can't act like, oh, the players are always getting taken advantage of. I've watched a lot of baseball and watched a lot of shitty guys making $20 million a year that your team and every fan wants to get rid of, but they get stuck for three more years. Happens all the time. I think a lot of players have taken advantage of the system. Now, you could argue a lot of players get wiped out, which I, if I was an owner, I'd be like, yeah, I don't, that's part, baseball's really unique. I, I'd say it's like golf or tennis or something. I want the little tours to kind of feed me the good ones because I can't afford to just, we already see all the time, right, with good baseball. You think the guy's going to be good and then he's terrible. Yeah. You know, I, I, I just, I think but those guys generally don't cost anything. No, that's true. You know, unlike so what, in the NFL. I, I, what's what's the sticking point here? I, I honestly, well, the I players are saying, really yeah, well, again, like, see, I don't even, I'm not going to dive deep into this because I don't think most people want to, but um, the players are saying that the owners aren't really even negotiating. Well, do, that do you the think, owner's goal do you think is that they've lost money the last couple of years? <clears throat> so they want to like, I wouldn't mind 120 game season. Well, yeah, it does seem like that the owners, that's what the player, like I saw Will Middlebrooks tweeting that the owners want a shorter season. The owners want to like cancel a month is what he says so that they can reduce salaries. Player salaries have, have like stagnated or gone down in the last four years. But I'd also push back as like, guy, a couple years ago, they got, they were getting to the point where like every guy was getting 150, $200 million. Obviously the top guys. I mean, true, but not really. Right. Like every guy wasn't getting $150 million. Right. The, The workforce is pretty big. How many guys do you think once they get paid are properly paid? Once they get a ten year contract, they're all no, not even not part. even that. I'm just saying, like once you get a contract, you could even factor in mean? the guys that get like four years, sixty million. Because I, I would say it oh. feels like the majority of guys, and maybe they'd push back. Well, it's because I don't become a free agent, so I'm thirty. Are overpaid the moment they get paid. Well, it's hard in the and this is a sport that's hard because your best players are worth like eight wins, right? Which is a lot. Like, if you're one of the best players, you're worth eight wins a year. So I think that's what's made it difficult. It's like, how as a player can you justify making 
$28 million when I can, uh, I can get your production with like, uh, you know, three guys that I'm paying $800,000 to. Right. It's hard. My, it's just really hard. My prediction, to justif- quote unquote, justify. Reading, I think the justification nothing, comes from the size of the pie. Feels like this season's going to get pushed back. Well, the deadline allegedly is today, Monday. Yeah. But I think the story was that the owners, when they started the lockout to negotiate, didn't negotiate, didn't do anything for 45 days or something. Didn't make their first move. They, they better be careful because our, our attention I think spans that, are already shortening. See, to me, that's the story. And that is where you go back to right or wrong. Like baseball is already having, there already is a problem for the sport. Well, because guys like you don't want to make it seven innings and put guys on second base. Yeah, I, I don't want to make it seven innings. That's for sure. Uh, pitch, why would I pitch, reduce- pitch clock, not allowed out of the box. No, no. Yeah, yeah, that I want. I'm all for pitch clock and stay in the box. I went to a game last year and watched some jackass take 45 seconds to get from the on-deck circle to the batter's box. Walking from, you know, walking behind the umpire along the dirt and then kicking his toes. In the- Walk from the on-deck circle to the batter's box. You should be able to do it in 10 seconds. I don't care if it's your song playing. There are things baseball can do, and they don't do even do those things. But here's what's unique about baseball, man. It is, while it's not as urgent, it's nightly content. It's nightly content. And I think sports went away, and people realized, like, ah, I could just, you know, the show may not be that great, but it's easy to watch four of them on Amazon Prime, low production value. But people just found other things to do. <laughs> people who love sports found other ways to fill their time. And it's hard when we've gone now a few years without a normal baseball season, right? Well, Coward's theory on baseball and basketball where they're going to get throttled moving forward is like the Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime effect of like people just watch shows and stuff. They have so many options during the week. Totally. Where football is just, hey, you know, Michigan, Penn State, Saturday night, Niners, Packers, Sunday. It's just so much. It's just once a week. But it's like, I don't I don't need to watch Warriors, Orlando Magic shit. I'll throw on uh, Kanye. Right, or I'll throw on, oh, hey, you told me about this other thing. Oh, what about this show? Hey, have you checked out Ozarks? It's just, That's why it's like so many fucking options. I think one thing that hurts baseball is the de-emphasis of the starting pitcher. Because at minimum, you need a couple nights a week where it's like, okay, our guy's going, like our ace, Madison Bumgarner's pitching tonight. Like there is a value in that, man, because it's kind of football-y. I actually think they are for our generation and younger, who's just going to have a, the tiniest attention span in the history of life, they still bring a value of a tangible go to a game, get out in the sun, drink some beer, have a hot dog. It is, or, or even like on a, you want to do something, I need to get out of the house on a Wednesday night, let's go to a game, 20 bucks, we just sit there, yep. Giants, whatever. Because Gamble on our, good, hey, and gamble on our phones. Yeah. That would help. Mound ball. On the phone. Money. Yeah. Mound ball is the way you played mound ball at a baseball game. Easy way to no. gamble. But I just mean like, could you play, could you legitimately just gamble? Like this guy's going to hit a home run. I'll yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's what baseball, baseball needs that too. On the phone. Like what's going to happen here? Strike out fan duel. Yeah. yeah. Ground out, strike out base, you know, like base hit, strike out, base hit or strike out or like contact out. That's, what about that's this? One. Like, what about this? Four to one, someone hits a double this inning, you know, just yeah. 50 bucks. Boom. Exactly. Something shit like that. But every, how about every at bat ground out? How many people, how many times you watch a game? Like, what you got here? Like you watch a team. It'd be hard like, to do real time fan duel inning. That would be not fan duel. I think it's gambling. It's not, fa- it's gambling, not like fantasy fan duel, like gambling fan duel, my bookie. Whatever. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. No, you could do it. It has to be real time on the app. Yeah. 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 It has to be real time on the app. You need good Wi Fi in the stadium. Mound ball is a, is fun. People who go to base, mound ball is great. If you get like three, four, five, if you get like six people hanging out. Mound ball is just everybody gets an inning or two innings. So say there's three of us at a game. Like I get the first, fourth, ninth. You get the second, fifth, seventh, whatever, however the innings break down. And then it's just at the end of the inning, the pitcher last outs made umpire takes a baseball and throws it on the mound. If it stops on the mound, you get the money in the pot. It's like we all put in money in the pot. Mound ball at the end of an inning. We did one thing when I was with the Eagles where it's like everyone has to bring like I know, guess you get half strip club, actually so. like three or four ones maybe yeah. six or seven ones and you put a one in the cup every time you your batter up yeah you know it's just like if there's six people there everyone puts a one and the moment home runs hit you, you get, get that pot. money that's a good one too it might be double I I can't remember the rules but it was something like that you put in a one every time that it comes to your turn and if nothing happens you just moves on but if some maybe it's a double maybe it's a home run maybe it's an RBI I don't 
know exactly how it works. Maybe you get two out if it's an RBI, but it's kind of cool. That's a good one. As you're uh, drinking and eating. Well, yeah, in, in a box, you know. <laughs> B-Zinc says, I, I've done mountain ball multiple times. You're there. It's just all of a sudden you'll hear, you know, everyone's watching the end of it. And, oh! Because it's, it's a very simple game, and it's fun. Gambling QR code on your app or ticket, you get two free dollars to bet on your $10 bet. Yeah, I mean, that's a great idea, B-Zinc, right? You, just, you, you walk into the stadium, there's two bucks already pre-bet for you. It's not about betting $50 for most people. It's just no. about having a little fun. Because the guy shot me the DM. He put $20 on Seth Straka, 120 hurt. <laughs> Pretty <laughs> incredible. You, you can bet little amounts and have the time of your life. And imagine all the bettable things that happen during a baseball game. A lot. I just do, do young bettors interested in baseball. You get, I think you got to get them to the yard. Yeah. Yeah, you, well, that's what it, I'm talking about live in stadium. Bet. You got to get them to the yard. Yeah. All right. On that note. Woo. Adios. Thanks for hanging, everybody. Godspeed.